Hello, Freshwater Aquatic Indicator Revision Team. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about the uh, revisions coming up and the, the South Atlantic Indicators. That's so where we'll be able to spend a little more time on discussion when we make it on the call. Uh, so first off, we always start with the mission of your cooperative. So this was a three to five year mission set a couple of years ago is to create the shared blueprint for conservation actions for natural cultural resources. So uh, basically, what do we want the conservation future of the South Atlantic to look like? Uh, you can see here the, the boundaries of the South Atlantic here going from the edge of the uh, Appalachians all the way 200 miles out into the marine environment. As far as steps in the blueprint, so we've already, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we already have a blueprint version 1.0, so we sort of made it through the various steps. Now we're going back and uh, setting things up for the next version of the blueprint, so the update for 2.0. Uh, so now we're going back to our uh, ecosystem indicators and targets, our shared measures of excess, and, um, and testing them based on the criteria we set for ourselves and revising them wherever needed. Here are the broad goals of your cooperative here. So they're about natural, cultural, and socioeconomic resources. Um, and so the, the focus is really on the natural and the cultural, whereas socioeconomics more is a sort of tool to, to sell the actions for the natural and the cultural. Uh, so on the natural resource side, it's all about the integrity of ecological systems. Um, so the, the, the group at this point, um, they said, okay, let's focus on ecosystem integrity, and we may need to look at the viability of certain key species if things start falling through the cracks. Um, but right now, put all your focus into the integrity of the uh, ecosystems. Um, and then on the cultural side, um, we also have a number of other sort of measures related to historic sites and biotic cultural resources that all um, basically intersect with how the cultural landscapes and attack cultural landscapes, how humans and histories fit into the landscape. Uh, but for, for this particular discussion, um, all the measures are, are basically sort of natural resource um, oriented indicators. Here are the different ecosystems of the South Atlantic. Uh, so we have nine ecosystems and two habitat aggregates. Uh, so as you can see here, the different ecosystems. Today we're talking about the, the freshwater aquatic. Um, and so just also a reminder about our aggregates, we have uh, measures like landscapes, which is about connections across the, all the different land system, ecosystems. And then we also have waterscapes, which is all about connectivity from the fresh water all the way out uh, into the open ocean. The current indicators the one that we're, we're looking at and revising. So these came a couple years back detailed input from a whole mess of different experts in the different ecosystems of the South Atlantic and input from experts from all the surrounding adjacent LCCs to see how well we might be able to share measures. Um, so a lot of different feedback from regional partnerships, phone interviews, uh, and finally integrated by um, integration of all that feedback and recommendations from a 20 member indicator team. Uh, so a lot of folks looking at these, the, the first initial set of indicators that were approved um, about a year and a half ago. So now we're going back through and um, testing them out. So at the same time, the steering committee approved the uh, indicators themselves. They also approved a testing and revision process because we knew we weren't going to get them perfect the first time. Um, so it was very important to be nimble and be able to circle back around. And if things don't actually do what um, we hope they do, then we can go ahead and, and fix them. That's what we're doing. The testing uh, revolves around the different criteria for how the indicators are selected. So we have practical criteria. So these are really around, um, you know, can we monitor them based on current resources? Can we model them based on current resources? Um, those kind of practical criteria. That was a pretty bright line. If we can't actually model them based on current information, they're not currently monitored um, across the geography, um, then we couldn't include them as, as indicators. Uh, then we also have ecological criteria. So, okay, are they actually, um, are they actually representing other components of the ecosystem? So how well are they, they tracking other ecosystem processes, other species, other components that we care about, particularly the ones they were intended to represent as indicators. And we also have social criteria. Uh, we're not gonna talk a lot about, about those uh, on this particular call, but they're really about how well they resonate with the American public, how well do you resonate with private land and water managers, public land and water managers, um, those kind of measures. So on the testing side right now, we've had a few different teams working on, on the different criteria. Uh, so on the practical criteria, 
uh, your staff here at the cooperative working with other researchers and folks um, basically have been testing that by creating um, or using existing GIS later, layers to depict them. So, okay, we thought we could model them based on current information. All right, let's go do it. Uh, let's make sure we can make a, an explicit GIS layer of it. And then on the ecological criteria side, we've had different teams uh, that have been working on um, testing the indicators themselves. The team that's been testing the freshwater aquatic indicators has been led by Bill Pine from University of Florida. Um, and so we'll be hearing more about that on the call itself. And I might be able to send out some of the testing results uh, maybe by Monday. Uh, so we'll be able to look at how well some of these measures are capturing other components of the system. We also had some folks from um, from Duke, one of the survey classes, test some of the social criteria. Uh, there's information on the South Atlantic website about that under indicators, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. So how did things do? Um, so on the practical criteria for the freshwater aquatic, uh, things actually did pretty well. Um, number of low impervious surface catchments, so that is actually one of our measures, so catchments that are you know, basically less than or equal to 10% impervious surface. So that's your that classic 10% impervious th threshold. Um, so we, we've got a GIS layer of that um, up on the planning atlas. And so that almost is not too bad. Uh, percent of natural habitat near rivers and streams. Uh, Southeast uh, Aquatic Resources Partnership did a riparian assessment um, that, that seems to meet this fairly well. So from a practical criteria, um, that one passed. Um, we may or may not be able to to update to that to some of the more recent um, new land cover that's come out, um, but that already exists. And then finally, the last one was an index of biotic integrity. Uh, so that was in, um, intended to originally include the, the wider suite of species, including sort of the fish community. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that more um, on the call as well, and I should be able to send that one out by Monday of the depiction of that. Uh, so this one's going to be around functional diversity. Uh, so really looking at fish habitat or fish traits and seeing how well they're represented in the, in the system as, a, as an index of the overall integrity of the ecosystem. So I sent out a couple of papers related to some background on the, the conceptual foundation, and we'll get some more information on that one soon. Uh, like I mentioned before, for testing the ecological criteria, it's, it's very close to done, but not quite done yet. Um, so we'll be talking about that fairly soon, and I'll get some information out to you. Um, as far as proposed revisions to the indicators themselves, exactly what the, the names are, uh, we've got no proposed revisions for the system because we, we have actually have been able to so far. It hasn't failed any of the practical criteria. And so the discussion is really going to focus on the GIS depiction of those indicators um, and making sure everyone's comfortable with and, and seeing if there are ways we can improve the exact GIS layers of those indicators. So what does that leave us with uh, for the overall freshwater aquatic integrity? Um, so for each of these ecosystems, there's, there's sort of two components that, that come into play. So for the freshwater aquatic integrity, um, we have, at the very top, we have metrics coming from the waterscapes uh, ecosystem. So those revisions are going to happen in December, um, but essentially the components we have in the waterscapes relate to in-stream flow and aquatic connectivity. So those kind of classic metrics are going to be covered um, in the waterscapes in a way that cuts across the different um, ecosystems. So within the freshwater aquatic integrity, we have in-stream flow, we have aquatic connectivity, and then we have the three metrics um, within the freshwater aquatic ecosystem. The number of low impervious surface catchments, the sort of riparian buffer measure, and then this index of biotic integrity we'll talk about a little more. So all of those combined give us the um, overall integrity of that freshwater aquatic system. All right, so now just a little bit about that revising the indicators process. So we've been on this monthly schedule, one to two ecosystems per month. Uh, so here we are, we're going to be talking at the um, end of September on the freshwater aquatic. Um, we're also doing forested wetlands um, later on, actually the beginning of October. So basically every month we hit uh, one to two ecosystems. Here's how it works. In the beginning we form out teams. Um, we try to get the indicator models out, try to get the potential revisions out for discussion. It's a couple weeks late for this particular ecosystem. Uh, and then basically at the end of the month, we send out some of the testing results. We have team calls. Uh, after the call, some further discussions, make some final recommendations. So that goes out in the next month's newsletter. So October newsletter, we'll get that out for uh, broader comment. And then there's a two-week comment period before revisions are final. 
Uh, so then we give another two weeks for anyone to comment and, and tweak before, um, before the revisions are done. Okay, so that is it uh, for the, the quick background. I just wanted to show you one more thing uh, information-wise. So as you're looking at the indicators, I'm going to send you a direct link to this. But just in case, um, when you want to review the indicators themselves, you can go to the Conservation Planning Atlas, salcc.databasin.org. Uh, we have this nice draft indicators for review and discussion where the stoplight is. Uh, so you can always go right in here um, and and you'll see the different folders. So what's final for Blueprint 2, what's in progress, and what's not reviewed. So we can go in here to in progress. You can go into freshwater aquatic, um, and you can access information for, for these different measures. What I want to show you real quick, because uh, this is something that trips up some folks, um, if you want to get some of the metadata and information around what this depiction is, so here I'm going to click on SARP riparian assessment here. Um, there's information in this description that gives you all the details on exactly how they are created, all the GIS steps, all the different components in here. So if you click on more, um, you get the, the different details of each data set. Um, so I think that's just something to keep in mind for all of these. You can always go to the data set itself and get the all the gory details, especially if we've done it as a cooperative, we try to hit all the mapping steps and, and components. So um, that is it for the background for everyone, and um, looking forward to talking with you soon.